Sarah Bodway here from Horse Racing Nation to take you through the Alabama Eve Pick 6 carryover at Saratoga. Some long shot prices in the final two races on Thursday lead us to a carryover of 167611 And I have a $64 ticket that I'm going to be playing for the sequence. And we start off in race number five, a claiming raise, $25,000 is the price of the tag. Three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two. We're going seven furlongs on the dirt. And... Perfect silent cat as the favorite. Just looks like he might be the best horse in the race. He's going to be a short price to start things out, but it's deservedly so. I mean, he's run 12 times. They've tried all kinds of different things with this guy. The dirt, turf, synthetic, stakes company. He's been there and attempted to do that, but this is a more realistic spot for this horse. He's in the Joe Sharp barn for the first time. They're putting the blinkers on, which is a move that they've had success with in the past, winning it 22% with that additional equipment. And I just think that he could be better than these horses. However, he's not going to be the only one on my ticket to start things out because I just don't fully trust him in that he doesn't really have any early speed to speak of. So taking a look at our pace report, the early predicted tempo is only fairly moderate. And we do agree on the likely front runner in the number one, Nicholas James. And to me, there was more to like about this nine to two shot as well. He's lightly raced compared to most of the other contenders in this field. And he hasn't been in for a tag since his debut back on April 14th. 14th, where he won with Jose Gomez aboard, who will have the call again in here. He's another one that they've tried some different things with, such as a cutback in distance or switching to a turf route. But ultimately, I think he does fit with this class level. And I really do like the seven furlong distance for him as kind of that in between from the sprints and routes that he's attempted in the past. I know that the number three Joey Loose Lips is dropping from last year's Albany, which was won by American Revolution, a horse that really needs no introduction. But he's been off for almost exactly a year. And at seven to two, I'm just willing to take a wait and see approach. So it's one and five for me to start out the pick six sequence. In race number six, we're going to take a look at our first timer power ratings. It's one of our newer reports for these two year old New York breads that are routing on the inner turf. And of course, I have to take a look at this report because for those that are unfamiliar, we've developed a ranking system for debut runners, and it's from one through five. It's pretty simple at first glance. The fives are the higher rankings. The ones are the lower. And we did just have a 15 to one five win the fifth race at Canterbury Park last night. So a $2 wager on that horse would have paid for a full day's report and then some. Now, looking at this field of first-time starters, there's no fives in this group, and one of the fours is an MTO. But let's take a closer look at the other four in here in number six, Let's Go Big Blue. Now, contributing positively to his ranking of four are trainer George Weaver's stats with these conditions, as well as Sire Kyra Prince's success with debuting turf routers. Digging a little bit deeper, there's some damn side pedigree as well, as this one is a half to Pinehurst, a grade one juvenile winner, although on the dirt. Let's Go Big Blue has worked twice on the turf, which I really do like to see, and all signs point to this one having some potential ability. Of the ones with experience, of which there are several in here, the other Weaver absolutely cannot be discounted in number nine provision. This horse was second on debut at 20 to one over both Secretary of War and El Camundo, who return in here. And I was there that day, and this guy ran big. He sat in second off of Who Me, got to that one at the top of the stretch, and I'm not saying he was beating Lachey, but there was an inquiry as that one did come in. And the inside on the turf and speed has been very dangerous so far on the inner. If this one can cross and clear, I know it's disappointing when you have 20 to 1 first time out and you're getting 5 to 2 next time. But I think this guy's a runner and I hope to survive in advance by just using the two George Weaver runners in this spot. Moving on to race number seven, an allowance race for Philly and mares, three-year-olds and up, and now we are sprinting on the turf. I'm going to use four horses in here, but I'll start with who I'm not going to use, thanks to our Sire Moves report, and that's going to be the number one, Freedom Speaks, who is trying the turf for the first time. And while there is some damn side pedigree for the grass, Sire American Freedom is 0 for 15 with turf sprinters. I'm really hard on offers, and this one can beat me at whatever price. We do have several that are exiting a common race. 
on July 24th, which was won by Nota Bene, and that does include Tuscan Queen, A Little Faith, Osiria, Chironi, and Neon Summer. But my top pick is actually going to be a new face to this group in the number four American heroine. This one is a full sibling to Air Force Blue, a multiple group one winner, and now Stallion, and she cost over a million at the 2020 Keelan September yearling sale. Now, she's only run three times, and I know she has yet to win on the turf, having broken her maiden routing on the Tapita at Gulfstream. But I'm pretty curious to see what we get from her off a brief freshening in March and cutting back from the seven and a half furlongs last time. I just thought there could be plenty of upside with this one. Maybe she'll get a little bit overlooked in the wagering. For some others, I'll also use the two American Starlets since I'll forgive any last out non-effort on that funky Churchill Downs turf course. Oh, and who does she beat on debut? Just Big Invasion, who has put together a six-race win streak since, including a 100 buyer speed figure in the grade three quick ball stakes, and who is being considered as a potential danger to a horse like Golden Pal come Breeders' Cup sprint time. So the fact that American Starlet was able to get the better of this one in their first race, I think that that could be a feather in this one's cap. And if she stays anywhere near that nine to two, I'm pretty excited about possibly betting this one to win. Now, for others that I want to include on my ticket, because this does seem like a competitive field, I'll put in crowding out as, as well, the number five horse, as uh, I will also include number seven, Chironi, because I think out of the ones that are coming out of that common race, Chironi is the one that you want. She completely missed the break. She did some running late. And I think that She's the only one that I would want to take out of that common race that I can make enough of an excuse for and that I feel has room enough to improve. And at 15 to one, I think that she'll also be the longest shot coming out of that race that has a chance to do some running in here. Moving on to the first of two stakes on the card in the sequence, the Summer Colony Stakes. These are older fillies and mares, a mile and an eighth. And my strategy in here is going to be an attempt to defeat some of the bigger recognizable names that are likely going to take the majority of the wagering action. And that includes number one, Army Wife, number three, En Bouton, and number seven, Bonnie South. I understand who these horses are. I've been following their careers since they began. And for the most part, I've just kind of seen enough. With Ambutan, she is the one that I would have wanted out of these three, but a last of four in the Beholder Mile at Santa Anita in her career, um, starting starting her five-year-old season in her career with a career was buyer of 67. I mean, what happened last time? And maybe if you can just draw a line through that race and come up with some reason why she should just completely bounce back and we can forget that that ever happened, great. But I can't do that. So I'm going with the four leader of the band and five first to act on my ticket because I'm just looking for recency and horses that are moving in the right direction. And to me, both of these two fit that profile. Now with leader of the band, she finished second last time out to search results in the grade three Molly pitcher. And that was ahead of both Army Wife and Bonnie South. And look, I know she got a great ride. She was stalking in behind. She saved ground. She angled out. But What's to say she's not going to get a similar setup in here? I think that she could sit right behind the speed of Misty Vale and be the first one to pounce an attack on that one. And now she gets Joelle Rosario in the saddle for the first time as well. And with first to act, I mean, she's progressed nicely so far in her short four race career with two seconds and two first place finishes. I think that she'll really appreciate the stretch out to the two turn nine furlongs. And this is going to be one of those rare opportunities where you can get a price on Irad Ortiz Jr. in the saddle. So I'm just going four or five in here. In race number nine, we have Flamers for $50,000, three-year-old fillies. Now we're back on the inner turf going a mile and a 16th. And while the top horse racing nation power pick is the number three Hatari, and I do agree that she is a contender, I have some reservations about this horse. Yes, she won last time out for the $40,000 tag over Fish Mooney, Mirth and Merriment, and Vintage Girl. But she also had an absolutely dream trip sitting behind a reasonable pace, saving ground and getting a wide open spot right up the rail because Mirth and Merriment, who set the pace, ended up going wide and out way into the middle of the track. And now Fish Mooney did do some running after being bumped at the start for second, but I just don't know about any of these. I wasn't too enthralled with them. Um, as I continue my process of elimination, I get to the five Rosemary Potatoes, who's certainly frustrated a lot of people that I, uh, whose opinions I respect greatly. And thankfully, she hasn't personally frustrated me yet. 
And I hope to keep it that way. So she's not going to be on my ticket. And neither is the number six, Diva Reddy, because Rudy Rodriguez is still one for 50 at the meet. And he can beat me with a horse that is three to one on the morning line. So in here, I'm going with the number eight, Judge Judith, on the hopes that she can just cross, clear, and keep on rolling. This is a horse that's riding a three-race win streak currently. And I understand that this is going to be a tougher group than what she faced last time out at Colonial. But her buyer speed figure certainly fit with this group. Now, if Martha Merriman hounds her and we're treated to a very rare affair of pace in a New York turf race, I'll also be using the two Radiant Gem on my ticket, who returns to the claiming ranks and should track closely while saving ground. She did break her maiden for the $40,000 tag on June 10th. She comes right back to win for the $50,000 tag on June 30th. And I feel like she was just in over her head last time while also having a less than stellar trip early with some bumping and checking. And again, this is on the inner turf where we have seen speed and particularly inside speed play very favorably over the last couple of days. So I feel as though I have my bases covered in there. The final race is a stakes race, which I feel is very rare for how these sequences end. And we have the Skidmore stakes for two-year-olds sprinting five and a half furlongs on the turf. And we do end with my least creative opinion of all. I just can't see past the number three, Oxymore, as your nine to five favorite. I mean, completely overlooked on debut, going off at 11 to one on July 1st. But this horse just crushed. I mean, he broke sharply, controlled very easily, and just completely poured it on to win by seven in 107 and four fifths for six furlongs. So I'm really not concern concerned about him shortening up half a furlong since he seems plenty sharp early. Now he was a private purchase apparently out of that race. And since there's no ticket where I'm leaving this one off, it's going to be a single for me to close things out. So to recap, I'm going 1-5 with 6-9 with 2-4-5-7 with 4-5 with 2-8 with 3, and that's going to be a $64 ticket. And you can follow me on Twitter at OutRunTheOdds for any up-to-date scratches and changes. I'll be posting my picks there as well. And for future handicapping content, please subscribe to our Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and good luck to you tomorrow.